right? So let's talk about, let's take it all the way back to the enterprise solution thing. So enterprise solutions we've identified were not even possible until industry 4.0. And this fourth industrial revolution is a present day thing, right? It's, it, it really just happened in the last five to 10 years. It's unfair to say that it happened 10 years ago because it really didn't happen 10 years ago. It's really been less than that. People have been talking about it, but it really hasn't come into practice until the last five years. So in order for us to even develop enterprise solutions, we needed the fourth industrial revolution. We needed networks, but we already had to have the third industrial revolution happen. That is automation. Now in the fourth industrial revolution, we're taking everything that we've, all that information now that's available because we automate it and we're doing something with it. We're helping to automate the process of making decisions. And we want to make those decisions in real time. That's why digital factories matter. But in order to do that, we have to create new integrators. We have to create new distributors. We have to create new products companies that that are gonna be able to service this transformation. What I wanna talk about right now is, what does the integrator of tomorrow look like, okay? And in order to answer that question, I wanna tell you what the integrator of today looks like. Now, this is gonna piss off a lot of my integrator friends because I'm gonna show our customers basically how their business works. But here's how an integrator works, okay? An integrator starts out small, generally as a niche. They start out in a niche, I'm a conveyor, integrator. I'm going to integrate conveyor systems into my material handling facility, okay? But generally, here's what happens. An integrator has, say, two senior engineers, and those senior engineers are rock stars. I was one of these guys. I've worked for other integrators. The senior engineer started out as a junior engineer or as a contractor. The junior engineer and the contractor are hired short term and they have super, super high turnover rate. You generally keep about one in 10 of these people, okay? So one in 10 for greater than six months. So I've got my senior engineers and then I also have my apps engineer. My applications engineer used to be a senior engineer. So he used to be a rock star. The applications engineer does sales and design, okay? So the applications engineer is the forward-facing person who goes to the customer and hears them out about their problem, takes a statement of work, and turns it into a, a quoted solution, okay? That application engineer works with the sales department to write a scope of work, to do the SOW, and to do your contract, okay? And that apps engineer and those senior engineers are the ones who are always talking to the customer, okay? This senior engineer sometimes is your project manager as well, or, you have a PM who used to be a senior engineer. So they kind of go like this, okay? So you have a project manager who used to be a senior engineer. So these guys are the one that sells the customer the bill of goods, okay? Oh, and that sales guy. And the project manager gets the project file. And here's what happens. The project manager writes out, you know, step one, step two, and step three. He writes out a schedule, then he interfaces with the customer. So this one goes, this guy's always talking to the customer, keeping a smile on his face, okay? And then what happens is the project manager gives the project to the juniors and the contractors. They call a contracting company, they bring in the engineers, and these engineers are the ones who do the actual work. No one who's ever talked to the customer ever. The senior engineer, if, they're, if they run into a problem, the senior engineer is the one who goes in and reassures the customer everything's going hunky-dory, okay? This is the reason that most integrators keep one out of every three customers. So the average is, is that the average integrator does a second project with a customer one out of three times. Okay, this is the old model. This is the industry 3.0 model. So one of the things that I would do is I would ask my, my integrator, do you operate like this? There are some fundamental issues with the way that this model works. Number one, they use the waterfall project management methodology. That means that we have to clearly define what our deliverables and milestones are. Now I can tell you that for enterprise solutions, if you watched our earlier videos, you know that you don't know what the milestones and deliverables are, okay? You don't know what they all are. You only know the first half. So you have to be agile. And in order to be agile, you can't use waterfall project management. You need to use, I like to use vanilla scrum because again, we said we have to think like software developers. Even though we're engineers, we got to think like software developers. So we use vanilla scrum. Vanilla scrum is I put all my tasks back here and I break my, I break my project out into phases or into releases or into sprints. And then I just draw my tasks and drop them into a certain step. Okay, as a new requirement comes up, we just add it into the backlog. 
and drop it in. Here, what we have to do is we've got to add it to the end of the schedule. We have to write a change order. We have to do all these things in Waterfall. Waterfall is not designed for enterprise solutions. Waterfall is designed for construction, which by the way is where it came from. I don't know, we're not building plants, last I checked. Okay. Um, all right, so that's the first problem with the way t the traditional integrator does it. The industry 3.0 integrator does it. The second problem is, is that these guys aren't doing your projects. Those are the, those are the rock stars. They're not doing your projects. Okay. The guys you want doing your projects. <laughs> they're the ones you want doing your projects, but they're not the ones doing your projects. And this guy is definitely not doing your projects. I assure you that the applications engineer, even if the integrator, yeah, the applications engineer is the guy who runs the company. He, it's almost always. The average integrator is less than $5 million in revenue a year. So that's, that, this, is, this is inside baseball. If you want to know, if, if you're a CEO, if, if you're a decision maker, you want to know why your projects fail? They fail for this reason. This is just one of those reasons. There's lots of other reasons. You have why your enterprise projects are failing. That's one part of it, okay? So the, the, the integrator of the future, I, I could keep going, I could talk about how eventually once you identify the rock star, the rock star becomes a senior, but it's one out of 10. You have all this huge turnover. He goes and creates his own company. Then he goes and creates his own company and that's what the reason they, because if he's a rock star, he's not gonna come here and get paid $80,000 a year when he's generating 450 to $500,000 a year in revenue, all that kind of thing, all right? There are some integrators that build themselves like law firms, which are based on reputation-based, limited liability partnerships, but the vast majority of integrators, I assure you, are built just like that, okay? All right, so the integrator of the future.